Welcome to another episode of the Art of Feminine Negotiation. I'm your host, Cindy Watson, and I am so excited to be able to introduce you to powerhouse Stacey Wallace today. Stacey, welcome to the show. It's so good to have you here. Oh my goodness. It's always exciting to see you, Cindy, and to be <laughs> part of your show and just what you're doing for women. It's really phenomenal. Thanks. Likewise. And today for our listeners, we're going to be talking about three common mistakes that women make in negotiation. And for those who don't know Stacey, as I say, she's an absolute powerhouse, a superwoman. For over 30 years, Stacey's owned, operated, or held senior executive positions in various multi-million dollar businesses in numerous industries. She has shared the, shared the stage with no less than five U.S. presidents, with Colin Powell, with General Norman Schwarzkopf, with Margaret Thatcher, Zig Ziglar, pro athletes, other high profile leaders. But she also has founded, she, she's the full package, I got to tell you, because Stacy's founded humanitarian organizations that continue to impact the lives of thousands of women and girls today. So Stacy, I know you have a passion to help individuals tap into higher consciousness of thought and that you're a big believer that positive psychology equates to more profitability. And that's so in line with my art of feminine negotiation. So I'd love you to talk about that for a moment with us. Yeah, you know, I'm an executive right now in a company that's an international company that we are in India and Malaysia and South Africa, all over the world. And yet I always say I'm 49% boss lady. So I've got the part of me that is I'm very focused on growth hacking and scale of companies into the hundreds of millions of dollars. And yet I'm also 51% missionary. I grew up in a missionary household. My grandpa was a missionary and sent missionaries all over the world through his Bible college. And then I had a dad that was both in investments and he was also a pastor. Um, so he raised money in order to help people in third world countries. Mm. So I can't get away from the importance of raising money, raising funds, creating wealth, but doing it with a purpose. And so that's why I always say helping people build a purpose-driven, highly profitable life and business that they actually love. And so many times I've seen people drive high profits, but they lose their peace or they lose their family. And it's how do you balance the two? And so that's why this season of my life in addition to what I do corporately, I'm also passionately focused on helping women really hone in on what we call the sweet spot audit, the sweet spot of your talents, your abilities, your giftings, so that you can really walk out the calling that I believe God has on each one of our lives, something that we're supposed to do while we're here. And when you're in that sweet spot, you can have peace and profits. I love that. I love that. And it's no wonder I knew the first time I met you, I felt that sort of connection as well. Because, you know, after 30 years as an attorney, as you know, I just shifted gears and started Women on Purpose because I believed as well, like that's the foundation. And, and we're so conditioned and taught that everything is about competition and toughness and the almighty dollar at all costs. And the beauty is, as you obviously have experienced and created over and over again, I've come to recognize that you can have incredible wealth um, coming from a place of compassion and empathy and rapport building where you're not coming from that competitive place and you can do it while living on purpose. So I love that you support that. And tell us a bit, I know you're the founder of mwomen.com that it's a nonprofit organization that rescues and restores women and girls who've suffered through, you know, really difficult circumstances. And I love that because you negotiate, you're such a master at negotiating for change in really creative and powerful ways. So, so tell us about that particular program. Well, you know, I have been negotiating for a long time at a high level. So my husband and I, we have scaled companies um, from scratch to hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, been tremendously blessed to build sales teams into the hundreds of thousands. Now, what's interesting about that is it requires you as a woman to really lean in. It requires you to uh, look at the world a little differently than most people do and not be moved by the rhetoric or the banter that's around you, but really stay in your lane, stay focused, do what it is that you've gained the skill set or the mindset to be able to do and do it effectively with consistency. Yeah. And so I found in our lives after 33 years and throughout the years, we've 
I'm, I've been married for 24 years. I got great kids that are loving God and, yeah. you know, making yeah. a difference in the world. And we just, we just lived a blessed life. And so you get to a place and I just turned 51 and you get to a you place great, right, like, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> oh my, I love you. I love you. I love you. Um, you get to a place where you're like, okay, I've had the spotlight on me for a long time, but is this all there is just to continue to grow and to continue to build? And I really got to a place where I felt like it's time to take the spotlight and turn it on other people. And that's when we launched the Fuel by Fire community and movement is how do we raise up women who are passionately dedicated to making a difference in the world? Some of them don't know how to do it. Some of them are looking for their side hustle. Some of them have a business, but they're wanting to scale to the first six figures, or maybe they're wanting to scale to seven and eight figures, but they don't have mentors around them in order to be able to do it. They're going to conferences, they're downloading uh, videos, they're doing everything. They're paying thousands and thousands of dollars, but they really don't have that feminine infrastructure because it's different scaling as a woman. We're wired differently. We have different um, outcomes and expectations. We have different emotions. We have different nurturing capacity that we have to give to multiple people. Uh, multitasking, we see multitasking, even though it does affect brains uh, in a very specific way. We think we can multitask. We like to claim that as women. It does not do good for our brains long-term. And that's why sometimes when we get older, we see things happening in our body mm -hmm. and neurologically because we're women, right? Yeah. And, and so when we know that, we began to recognize, wait a minute, we can actually, and this is what happened to me, I, the older I got, the more I realized, I wanna make a difference in the lives of women. Yeah. So in women is our nonprofit outreach. We reach a lot of women and girls that have been molested, abused, they've been trafficked, uh, really put in a place where the world tells them it's over. Yeah. This is it for you. This is the best you've got. I've got one gal right now that we're working with. We got a number that have been incarcerated, but I'm thinking of one in particular. She can't get a normal job. Yeah. So where does she go? I mean, she's going to always have to believe that I have to be a waitress or I have to work at McDonald's or I have yeah. to somehow. And, and she's, you know, really been told that we can't hire you. I see it differently. In yeah. fact, the women that I hire come out of in women because I believe in restoration. I believe not, we have something called embrace, educate, equip, and empower. So somebody mm -hmm. might be at the lowest point of their life, but the question is, can they be regenerated? Can they be restored? And even more, can they be completely reinvented so that they're not going back to who they were, yeah. but they're actually having what we call new life. Yeah. And so M Women basically gives new life. We help folks who are caught in all kinds of situations. We have free programs that we offer. EMWomen.com is the website. Uh, women that find themselves uh, pregnant and they don't know what to do. Women that are hurting or maybe they're lost or they're running away from somebody who's abusing them. We provide resources to help women get to that first step. And that's called the embrace step. And then we've got educate, equip, and empower. And yeah. once they're moving into the equip and empower, we move them over to fueled by fire. And fueled by fire is really, we're helping women be boss ladies and learn how to do it with peace, profits, and integrity. Yeah. And we're helping women really be able to anchor their purpose with their passion, with the profit mechanism that they are choosing to scale or to grow. And uh, so it's really an ecosystem of what we do with women and we absolutely love it. Oh, I get, congratulations and hats off. Like truly Stacey, I mean, that is such a powerful movement that makes such a difference in the world. And I love when you said reinvention, that just so mm -hmm. resonated deeply with me. And interestingly, just before we started for our listeners out there, Stacy and I were talking about neuroplasticity and Stacy is something of an expert in that. And I love this idea. And I, I wouldn't mind you speaking to that because I think for women, we we face so much deep conditioning about being less than and not being seen to be a bitch out there and keeping yourself smaller and those yeah. feelings of not enoughness, so much conditioning and limiting beliefs that hold us back. So I love this idea of reinvention and the possibility with neuroplasticity, we can become and step into anything we wanna be. It is such a hopeful way of looking at the future. So I, I want, wanted your it's thoughts on so that. It's so true. You know, we are coming in 2021, what a great year. So here we are, we've already, we're already in 2021 for those of you that are listening. 
but we came out of a 2020, right? And I've heard so many people talk down about 2020. And I have a saying in my podcast, when you have a setback, don't take a step back, but get ready for your comeback. Because sometimes a setback, even like a setback year, like 2020, is actually a setup for you to rethink, reboot, recalibrate, or even reinvent your life and your business. So for some people, they lost their business in 2020 and and they may still be mourning that. And I encourage you to allow your brain to shift, your mind to shift. Your brain is scientific, it's, it's form and it's matter. But your mind, which operates in your conscious and your subconscious, you actually have the ability to control what's happening in your physical world through your mind. Now I am, I happen to be a woman of faith that I believe there's also something called the, the super consciousness. And that's the God consciousness. When you bring these realms of consciousness together, you actually can turn and look at 2020 and you do something that is very, very important. So number one is to recognize the trauma, right? So, okay. I recognize there was some really crummy things that happened for a lot of people. Maybe you lost your business in 2020. Okay. So Number one, identify the trauma. Be okay with it. Don't say like it didn't happen. It did. Don't bury it because that's yeah. not healthy. That's not that's not neurologically expansive. I talk about something about energy expansion and time expansion. Well, when you look at 2020, you go, okay, I'm going to go ahead and say that happened. Maybe you went through divorce. Maybe you lost your business. Maybe you were abused. Maybe something really, really traumatic happened. Maybe you lost somebody that you really love. Number one is identify that it happened. Number two is begin to research what could have been better. How could I have dealt with that trauma better? How could I use that setback as a set up? Okay, so I lost that business. What could I, what would I have done differently had I known now what I didn't know then? So now you begin to do some research on the trauma, research on what, what took place, how, what, what, what did I open the door to? that allowed that event to happen, right? So I'm not saying that, like, let's say, for example, a woman has been physically abused. Yeah. I'm not saying that you didn't get abused. Number one, identify the abuse. Yeah. But number two, say, how did I get into that relationship? Yeah. Where was I, we, what did I, what, why did I say yes to that? How, what, how did I lean into that moment? And then number three, document your findings. So we were talking before about neuroplasticity, about one of the amazing things is people get diagnosed all the time with very, you know, autism or um, chronic anxiety yeah. or chronic depression. And there's so many titles now yes. and all of them, none of them are a life sentence. Love it. But all of them are a symptom of a deeper rooted issue. And so if we stop at science and we stop at diagnosis, we never get to the place where we actually find true restorative healing. Yeah. So we were talking about me driving, I drive an F-350 Dooley King Ranch, right? So it's a big old beast of a truck and it takes up a lot of space, but we also pull a 20,000 foot house when we're traveling with our <laughs> RV. So there's a reason for it. But, you know, Ford, I believe Fords are built really strong. I love a Ford truck. I think they're really good. But there are times like recently our engine light came on. Now, I don't just say, you know what, that truck is done. I'm done with it because it's got this engine light on. No, I have to take it in for diagnostics. And usually we don't do it right out of the get go, do we? We like drive it and we're like, maybe it'll just go away. <laughs> maybe the engine light will just stop because we really don't want to give up our vehicle. But eventually we recognize the issue. We take it in for a little bit of research. They document the diagnostics on what the engine light is all about. And then they begin to describe why is this happening so that we can create the how solution. How are we going to rectify what's wrong? Well, we can do that. That's one of the beautiful things about neuroplasticity. We can actually take that same process five things you know number one recognize it number two research what happened number three document take the diagnosis doc the diagnostics document in your journal document somehow that you're actually saying wait a minute i'm going to put on pen and paper or in my computer i'm going to start to document this is why journaling is so important and then we're going to realize why i'm going to really begin to get not just the how did i get into that or why what did i do when i got into that but what was the why and why is this important for it to be solved for? Should I just medicate it? 
or should I find the why? Yeah. Because then you can get to the how do I create a solution? Yeah. And that's when you start to go from my life sucks, 2020 sucked. I heard, I've heard that so many times too. Oh, Whoa, come out. There's, there's four more steps. <laughs> yeah. four more steps and we're in 2021 yeah. that yep. now as women, you know, I, I said it all through 2020, 2019. I said 2020, 2021 will be the year of the woman. We will see more women stepping up into politics, into offices of influence, into positions of power within corporations. Why? Because I personally believe that God is getting ready to do a real big shift where we start to clean up some things that have been secretly broken. Women, and again, this is not a gender bias by any means, but we have an opportunity to walk into a room with a kid and we see, you know what? It's time for you to clean up your socks, yeah. child. <laughs> you, I've, I've let you do it. I've given you your freedom long enough, yeah. but this is not good for you because one day you're going to be married and your wife is not going to want you to have socks or, or one day your husband's not yeah. going to want you to do that. Well, that's what's happening. That feminine spirit is on the rise right now because there's some cleanup in the house that needs to take place. There's attitudes, there's injustices. And so we're in a season where we're gonna see women and that feminine energy come forward. And that's why it's so important to know how to negotiate, to come forward and begin to negotiate on behalf of legacy. Yeah. And in my book, uh, Fueled by Fire, I have this whole section that I talk about not being competitive because that is so trite and it's so temporal, but really thinking, what am I negotiating for? Am I negotiating for money? Well, money has wings. Yeah. Am I negotiating just for me, myself, and I and my family? Well, that's really, really boxed in. That's not going to change the world. That's called playing small. Or am I negotiating for legacy? When you negotiate for legacy, you're negotiating for something that will outlive you. Yeah. You're negotiating for something that's bigger than you. Mm -hmm. And Cindy, that's really how that brain mind works. It's yeah. how we look at trauma or, or setback so that we can quick, as quickly as possible, shift it, get the diagnostics and shift it into a comeback. Yeah. Wow. There is so much packed in there. I love it. And I just love how parallel so much of what you do is with with sort of my thoughts as well. Yes, and it's right. So deeply. As you know, and for our listeners out there, Stacy and I both shared a stage at TEDx Ocala. Uh, Stacy gave a fabulous presentation, sort of launching, I guess you're fueled by fire in some ways. And um, my my subject was the rise of the feminine voice. So I mean, this right. totally resonates with me. I do believe. You know, we've let the world get into a bit of a state of chaos coming from this very competitive masculine model. And again, it's not a gender based thing. We're talking about masculine and feminine energies, even frankly, right? So I love that idea about the rise of the feminine and stepping into that and seeing the strength in it as opposed to seeing it as a liability. I think that's going to be a profound shift that's going to start to change how we look at things. And I love when you talked about 2020 as well, when COVID first hit. I was so distraught to see how quickly everybody jumped into a place of fear and negativity. And so I started doing daily Facebook lives, just trying to encourage people to see the opportunities, see the gifts that are there. What lessons can we learn from this to move forward? And ended up finally, it went on much longer than I expected, than anybody expected. So I created a little ebook called Negotiate from Fear to Powerful Resilience on it. So many of the points you just talked about, the importance of that ability to, you know, where your focus goes, your energy flows, right? And, and being able to control your state. I love it. And I just love, and I really would invite our listeners to, Pay attention when Stacy talks, all of her language, everything about her at her core is about positivity. Like every message is about reinvention and restoration and all of these sort of positive reframes on how we approach life. So, and speaking of your leadership in that positivity, I know you're also the founder of Empower You Publishing, which sort of helps leaders write their stories and, and to be able to use those voices to bring about social change. Again, just another powerful way that you are out there negotiating change in the world. Tell me a bit about your vision for that. I hadn't known that about you, to be honest. I didn't realize you had this Empower You Publishing, and I love it. Love to hear more about that. It's amazing when you are in the spotlight, people, um, you know, I've always said if, if people, if I get to the end of my life and people just say, wow, um, I have failed. I don't believe that is success. My dream is to get to the end of my life and people say, wow, if she can do it, I can do it. And she showed me how. 
And so that's the power of legacy, right? It's bringing it off of me and onto others. And so one of the things I've written eight books and I've been very blessed in a lot of curriculum and um, written a lot of sales programs for corporations. And like you said, traveled with Zig Ziglar for 12 years. So there's just a lot of, there's a lot of content inside of me. So the more I deliver content, the more people say, how do you do what you do? And I came to a place where I realized that you know, publishing, the whole publishing world has changed dramatically. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I don't encourage people to, to get with a publisher unless you're going to get a really good signing bonus, unless yeah. they've got a really good social space that they're going to be able to promote themselves. Now, I am with a publisher. I'm with Baker Publishing. But I really encourage people that um, it's just a different world these days. It's not like signing with a publisher and they go yeah. and do everything. Yeah. Uh, it's, you still have to promote your book. You still have to do your podcast. You, it's not like they're going to go get you on a whole bunch of shows. Yeah. You're still having to do that. <laughs> and so when I realized that there was a gap, so for people who can't get a publisher, what do they do? And then there's a rise of self-publishing. Yeah. But I realized that a lot of people need more than just, I want to self-publish because I mean, you can just go do that on Amazon. Yeah. But what they needed was they needed structure. They needed training. So I created a program that uh, we offer free on, on my website, stacywellis.com. Wow. And, and it's a free program that'll get you out the door, starting to write your book. The, the, and it's a, it's a free program. Anybody can go and watch it. It's a video. Yeah. It's a webinar where I train for over an hour and a half on how to write your book and some key uh, modalities and actually methods of how I've been able to write so much curriculum. Yeah. But then uh, disclaimer is at the end of that video, I lead them into an opportunity to do a full course, a full writing course where they get the action guides and they get um, a workbook and all of the things and, and teach them how to take, and that's like eight hours of training. And so we ultimately, that's how it started. Yeah. And then I realized we, the more we helped people write their story, you know, we always say every person has a story and every story can change the world. Yeah. And, and most of us, our story might be that, you know, we, we've just struggled. Um, but how can that help somebody? Yeah. Well, there's somebody struggling right now with something like you. And, and even if it's a hundred people that read your book instead of a hundred thousand or you're a New York yeah. bestseller, that's a hundred people that you could impact. Um, but knowing how to take your story and put it to manuscript so that people want to finish. Yeah. That's that's a trick. You know, that's a skill that you have to learn. Yeah. And so I love working with people and teaching them how to take their brilliance, whether it's their personal story or whether it's something they're good at, a sales tactic, put it yeah. into a book form. So now they can create residual income. They can sell that book. They can have a podcast on. We teach people how to podcast. And uh, it really has, be, it's just comes alongside the ecosystem of what we've built uh, for the Fueled by Fire movement. Yeah. I love that. I, I just, it, that is something so close to my heart. I tell you, I believe so ferociously in the power of the word, you know, the power of the written word to be able to affect social change, to be able to change people's mindsets. And you're right. The publishing industry has changed. It came as a rude awakening to me. I know I, I'd written a book as well. It got traditionally published. It won an award, much to my surprise, but the publisher did nothing to promote it. So I had to, I wish I'd known about your course back then, because boy, did I have to learn on the fly how to get out there and be able to promote. So I love this idea. And I encourage people to go check out that resource, because I agree. I think, Stacey, we all have a story to tell. We all have lessons that can change somebody else's life. So again, kudos for that. I think it's, that's just fabulous. Think about your life, Cindy. I mean, here you have this amazing career as a lawyer, right? You, you are leaning in where a lot of women were stepping out. Yeah. You're negotiating where so many people would say, eh, I just don't want the stress. Yeah. I just, don't. but the knowledge and the skill set that that gave you I mean, I even look back on my career in Broadway and musicals and all that that I did when I was young and recording five CDs and, you know, it's like a whole nother life to me <laughs> that other people would be like, what? I, I didn't even know you did that. But the knowledge and the training, the communication skills yeah. it gave me, that's why I always say, and I say this to my kids, I've got a 19 year old and a 20 year old. I say to them, there is no wrong job yeah. when you're 16 to 20 years old. There's just yeah. not. 
because you're going to gain <laughs> skill set, you're going to gain knowledge, you're going to gain insight, emotional quotient is going to go up, you're going to learn how to deal with people. My daughter worked for Chick-fil-A and she was like, man, some of these older people are just grumpy. <laughs> and I said, you know what, you're, growing, you're learning. And so she had to learn how to savvy when she saw that couple coming in and they were regulars. How to, you know, how do I up my tone a little bit so that I can make sure they have a good experience at Chick-fil-A? Those things right now, whatever you're going through, whoever's listening, there's it's not just about before you're 20. There's yeah. no such thing as a bad season. Yeah. If you look at the season, remember what we said a minute ago, and you acknowledge it. You research it a little bit, get some wisdom out of it. You document it and make sure that you're moving through those process, those steps so that you begin to say, you know what, I, I'm never going to do it again. I'm done with that, <laughs> but I'm going to use the knowledge I gained from that in order to do something epic in this Absolutely. season. I love it. I love it. And it's funny, you brought up negotiation. I'd love you to lead in now because you've had some great negotiating experience as well. Tell us about what you would think are the three most common mistakes that women make in negotiations. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay. So I would say the first would be, and I talk about this in, in my book, Fueled by Fire, is playing small. Yes. Uh, when you play small, you are leaving money on the table. So my daddy, when I was a little girl, we played a lot of board games growing up. And one of them was Monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then we moved into Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game and others. Uh, but if there is $10 on the table and nobody's claiming it, claim the $10. <laughs> Don't leave money on the table. Yeah. So when we play small, we're not, we're not getting what's given to us. We're not giving our full potential. We're not accessing everything that God is laying on the table for us. What we're doing is we're disqualifying ourselves yeah. before we even get to the table. So I always say, you know, there's a, there's a statement in my book that says you are powerful beyond words. And when you're fueled by the fire, yeah nothing will be impossible for you. And the fire in my book talks about the fire of God, the creator of the universe, having a connection with the fact that you are his creation. You're not just something out of your mama's womb. You are sent here on a purpose with a purpose uh, by the ultimate purpose so that you would reflect his nature to humanity. When you get that, there's not a table. I don't care if it's a table of presidents around the world and prime ministers and world leaders. You have been sent for such a time as this with a purpose, with your story, <laughs> with your skill set. So don't play small. Love and it. and I believe that our playing small does nothing to create legacy. It does nothing to yep. change our family. But when we belly up, lean into the table yep. and we actually perform at our highest level of efficiency, we're able to negotiate into things that we never dreamed possible. So don't play small. That's the and if that didn't fire people up to play a little <laughs> bigger on the field, I don't know what will. That was awesome. So what's number two? Number two is managing our emotional quotient. Yep. So we are at the end of the day, we are chicks and we got attitudes and we've got emotions and our chemical makeup. I mean, I'm like, I'm going through menopause right now. Like if that ain't crazy enough as it is, like one day I'm cold, next day I'm hot. One day I'm happy. Next day I'm going like, whoa, why am I so grumpy? Right? We got to know, we, we, again, diagnostics, we got to be able to run diagnostics and yeah. go, wait a minute. Am I emotionally addressing this coworker? Am I emotionally addressing this negotiation? Or am I cognitively and spiritually negotiating? Yeah. So I believe there's spiritual negotiations that are even bigger than, than, than brain negotiations or, 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 or um, financial negotiations. So when I go into a room, I'll give you an example. Because we are emotional women. And there's times where we're like, I can't believe. I mean, I heard somebody one time, they heard me negotiating a really big deal. And they were just listening uh, from another room that yeah. they had never heard me negotiate before. And when we were done with the negotiations and I was very blessed that the negotiations went the way I needed him to go. Um, she said, do you know he cut you off three times? <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? She said, that man you were talking to cut you off three times. I said, girl, I ain't got time for all that. <laughs> I said, I don't care if it cuts me off. That's, that's, I said, are you a responder? She goes, what's that? I said, 80% of all women are responders, which means they respond emotionally 
yeah. versus cognitively with wisdom. There's a difference between emotions and wisdom. Yeah. You can have both. You can be a woman with great emotions, but operate with great wisdom. Yep. And so wisdom is like, I'm not going to level myself to, did he cut me off or not? Because I don't play those games. And yeah. so I said this to her, I said, I'm going to help you with your emotional responses. Because if you're seeing that, I promise you, you're offended out of most of the negotiations you go into that don't go your direction, you get yep. offended by it. That's what we do sometimes as women is we negotiate emotionally versus no negotiating with wisdom. And it's a big yeah. difference. It's not even, it's even beyond um, neurologically. It's yeah. there's another level to where you read a room and you're able to see what's going on in the room. So here's an example. I was in a room with multiple billionaires negotiating uh, a very big telecommunications deal. And in the room, I was the only female in the room and the men were negotiating about the takeover of a smaller company and all of their customers. And I'm listening to them talk about all of these customers. They call them subscribers. These yeah. subscribers are worth X, Y, Z. These subscribers are worth X, Y, Z. Well, if we do this takeover in the middle of the night, it'll be a greater impact <laughs> to company C and we will be able to extract the subscribers. And as I'm listening to this, my heart is crushed. On the inside of my heart, I'm thinking about Maria who has four kids, yeah. her husband has left her. And if they do that in the middle of the night, she loses her phone number and she loses access to her four kids. Yeah. And I'm thinking about the real estate agent whose entire company and business is built upon their phone number. So I am emotional in that moment. Now here's how we can as women use emotions to our advantage. I'm assessing the moment, I'm boiling. Like really, like I wanted to take a two by four and whack them all over the head. <laughs> I'm boiling on the inside. And that's when I stop and I don't tap into my emotions. I tap into wisdom. Yeah. And I just say, I whispered, God, help me. I know I need to say something. I haven't spoken for 30 minutes and they're used to me talking a lot. Yeah. What do I say? And all of a sudden, as I'm sitting there, a tear starts to come down my face. And I'm like, oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. Because I've got to negotiate this room right now. Yeah. And a man turned to me and said, Stacy, you're being very quiet. Why are you being so quiet? And again, I mean, now the waterworks yeah. are gone. And I said, I cannot believe you, not one of you have talked about the impact this has on the customers. Not one of you have talked about the individual lives that are going to be impacted by this quote unquote takeover. And I said, you guys are going to just have to give me a minute because I'm thinking about the customers here and what impact is. Well, I walked out, I came back in and I said, I don't think this is a good deal. It's a money deal, but this is not a good deal. We've got to think of a new solution. Well, the good news is they completely rethought that whole nice. process, did a whole different. Well, that is how we can use our emotions effectively. Yeah. But man, woman crying in the boardroom, that can get all kinds of cray cray if it's not done with wisdom. Yeah, I love that. And it's funny, again, so parallel because a part of my negotiating, art of feminine negotiation is what I call the no fear system. And the R in the fear, F-E-I-R, is reactivity, no reactivity, right? And, and, I, and I have a saying, it's exactly where you just ended up. You can bring emotion to the table, know your deep why, know what the other side's deep why is. You can bring and use that emotion to fuel it, but don't be emotional. There's a big difference. So I love that. <laughs> okay, and what was number three? Well, number three real quick is just not doing our research, yeah. right? So going in and thinking that the room is gonna somehow just buy into you. Um, that would be where our ego steps in front and instead, and this is where we oftentimes, especially in this season where everybody's being taught, you know, be a boss lady, be strong, be, you yeah. know, be, you know, let your masculine energy equal the masculine energy. I've heard so many things and I'm like, you know what, I can be all woman and all feminine, but I just need to have my mental game, yeah. my wisdom game and my spiritual game in line, because if I come into the room with the right research, I can outthink, outwit, and outlast anyone in the room. I and so it. I could say a lot of women don't do their research yeah. to show up with the excellence that they need to have in the room of negotiations. Yeah, I love that. And I, I tie to that because assertiveness is such a key element in negotiation, but people often conflate it with aggressive and they're not the same thing because assertiveness right. just comes from confidence. Confidence comes from knowledge and knowledge comes from preparation, which is exactly what you're saying. Do your research. I love that, Stacey. Such a great tip. 
And speaking of tips, what would be the top tip you would have for being, you know, a resilient leader as a woman in corporate America? For me, I, you know, I, I get that asked a lot, you know, at the end of a podcast, Stacey, what's that one thing you want to leave behind? If there's one thing I can say after all of the years of business of, of doing a, I've been, just been so blessed and I'm so thankful. Mm -hmm. um, the secret sauce of my life is having a really straight, direct connection with my creator. Mm -hmm. And I take time every day. I meditate. I pray, I center myself into saying, I wake up every morning, I lay in bed, the first five minutes of my day are what I call my secret sauce. Yeah. Before I ever engage my psychology, my body, my, my energies, my, my chemical reactions, you know, that first step, your body starts to react chemically. I lay there and I just whisper and I say, God, what would you have of me today? Mm. And as I said, sometimes it's really clear and sometimes it's just very peaceful, but I always want to let him know that I'm not here just for me and my family and making money and, you know, hopefully becoming something in the world, but I'm really here to be a reflection of him to the earth. So I really need his partnership. And if he's got something, if he wants me to go to Walmart today and just do something nice for somebody in line or go to Starbucks and buy someone's car, I, I want to be tapped in yeah. like that to the creator of the universe so that he can get out of my life what he needs so that I can hear well done. Beautiful. I love that. I love that. Absolutely. And so I want to give you the chance too to talk about uh, your upcoming Fueled by Fire Summit. Super exciting. Let us know about that. Well, we are always wanting to help women uh, and we have men that come along too. We are about 64% women, yes. but just come in and build that purpose-driven, highly profitable life and business that they love. And so for five days, I literally unload with the highest level of execution, the methods and strategies that I believe are the secret sauce behind why I've been able to do what I do. I talk about the 1% method, which is micro progress. I talk about the sweet spot audit, which is finding your niche, finding what it is you're on this planet to do. Uh, I talk about the big boom, which is breaking out of mediocrity. And all of those we go into for five days, just pouring out into women. And we've got a private community that uh, is just fueled by fire community on Facebook. You can go check it out. And really every person that comes into that community gets an advocate. I've trained other women and leaders that are going to come alongside and just be scaffolding through the entire challenge so that you can get the free resources. Or if you've got questions about uh, financial literacy, we make sure we plug you into, we've got so much uh, so many resources. We want to make sure that every person that comes has a lifeline, and that's what we call our advocates. So it's the five-day fu uh, Fueled by Fire is the, the community yeah. with a life and business transformation challenge, and I would love for you, you just to tell your folks about it. love for everyone to be there. Yeah, absolutely. I'll make sure to put that in the show notes as well to remind people to get there. And one thing I just want to say as well to all our listeners out there, one of the things you'll really notice, and it isn't to that positivity about sort of reinvention and restoration that you'll notice always underlines all of Stacey speaking, also a profound sense of gratitude. How many times even in this conversation have you heard this absolutely heartfelt centered gratitude for everything that she has and even and I can tell you from personal experience even when times are tough Stacy, you have this gorgeous ability to still always find that gratitude so thank you for that thank you for modeling that and I just wanted to point that out for our listeners so you can start grabbing a piece of that in your life as well because it's a game changer absolute game changer so so for all of us again thank you Stacy, for being here you've been fantastic you have loaded so much valuable, life-changing information for women to be able to step into their power in new ways and new insights. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Cindy. You know, Cindy, I am so grateful for you and what you're doing right now. And I just look forward to more collaborations in the future. Absolutely. Thanks. And for our listeners, if you want to learn more about Stacey, any, check out her books, check out her Fueled by Fire um, community on Facebook, check out her Fueled by Fire Summit upcoming, check out StaceyWallace.com and that's Stacey with an I. So S-T-A-C-I Wallace, W-A-L-L-A-C-E.com. I'll make sure to put that in the show notes 
notes as well. So I'm sure you have all got absolutely loads of value from this episode. And if so, subscribe if you haven't already done so. And make sure to share this episode with anyone that you think could get some value from this message. And frankly, I would say any woman that you care about, you should be sharing this episode and tell them to listen to it at least twice, because there's just all kinds of nuggets there that you can't possibly pick up the first time. It's worth a re-listen. And also make sure to join our Women on Purpose community if you haven't done that. Women on Purpose community on Facebook. And that's a wrap for this episode. So until next time, go forth and negotiate your best life on your terms so that you can stop missing out and start getting more of what you want and deserve from the boardroom to the bedroom.